Uh, so let's call to order at 12 11 p.m. Uh, Janie, can you take the minutes? Got it. Okay. And I had sent out agenda and the minutes from the previous meeting uh, yesterday so that everyone could have those handy. Previous meeting was March 7th. Uh, any questions or comments about those minutes? Otherwise, I would look for a motion to approve. So moved. Danny, would you like to second? Well, am I the only one who can? Yes. Oh, okay. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? No. Nope. So we'll carry on then. Uh, and then as advertised, I will get started on the uh, uh, museum update uh, from yesterday. So um, Kathy had taken the notes here and so she'll be able to chime in, chime in in more detail when she arrives. Uh, but uh, the long and short of it is that the um, museum is um, in agreement to uh, take a look at the possibility of acquiring the bank building across the street. Um, as I state that, uh, I would encourage everyone here not to um, not to share that. Um, Kathy McKechnie, being a real estate uh, agent, is is very keen to not put out the word that we have any interest in the property before we've had a chance to get into any sort of discussion with the. Um, with the Weilers about that property. So um, as I provide the update, please do keep in mind uh, that we should keep this under our hats for now. Um, and Melissa and Jillian, I, I think that for, for now, we'll want to um, include the rest of the staff with that and kind of keep this under our hat un until we um, get things moved along a little further. Are we not posting the recording then? Because it is being recorded. It is. Um, I have, because of the nature of the discussions that we've been ha having, I have been holding off on posting the campaign planning meetings. Okay, great. So I should just do it anyway, and then you'll post it when you're ready. Yep. Cool. I've got. I've got a whole. I've got a ton of these uh, that we'll be posting at some point. But I know. Because we've been discussing things like relationships with the museum, uh, relationships with the friends, I've um, sort of held off on, on posting those for now. I didn't want them to create an unpleasant, um, create misunderstandings, um, basically, as we were having conversations, critical conversations with other organizations. Um, so the, um, in, in looking at things, the museum, uh, did state that uh, their um, for 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 them they consider it to be very important that they would have a um, an agreement in place that would um, you know can continue to provide provide for them the um, the positives that they see out of the current um, lease agreement. So they would be looking uh, preferably to um, continue with a situation where the, the library owned uh, both properties uh, rather than one where they owned that building outright. Um, you know, the, the big advantages of the library owning the buildings are that the library isn't required to pay any utilities, um, whether sewer or water or electric or gas, uh, that's, the village franchises, we don't have to pay for any of that. Um, and library doesn't pay property taxes, which they would have to do. So um, it's to, to their advantage to continue that relationship from that perspective. I did make clear, uh, Kathy and I did make clear that, um, you know, in, in taking a look at that space that we would definitely need to um, evaluate, you know, for, for the future, how that building would be maintained. Um, so that it would be fiscally manageable 
um, to you know maintain both buildings but they do feel strongly that the that that building across the street has uh, a lot to offer that it would be a lot more space that it would be a uh, a real positive um, so uh, what was discussed was um, analyzing the space and then coming up with a number that we would work together to raise that would represent um, the cost of the space, um, the cost to rehab the space, um, the cost for maintaining, um, the cost for the museum setting themselves up over there, as well as the cost for the library to set itself up in the space that the uh, museum currently occupies. So kind of a, um, a catch-all as, as, as far as everything that both organizations would need in order to facilitate this, um, both now and going forward, which I think is the right way to look at it. Um, the, as it was left, um, Kathy O'Hare was going to make um, an initial outreach to the, to the village and then following on that, we were going to take a look into um, the possibility of getting an appraiser uh, over to take a look at the building over there so that we had some sense of the condition as well as uh, an idea of what uh, the value, current value would be pegged at. So overall, uh, to summarize, I would say that it was a, a very positive meeting. The uh, museum wanted to make very clear where where they stood as, as far as um, what they would look to gain um, you know right up front so that they were clear on things which we appreciated um, but there wasn't anything um, that I think Kathy or I felt at the time that was like oh we can't do that um, everything that they had suggested was definitely within the realm of what we had already discussed as a possibility um, so the, they are within the same ballpark as, as we are in terms of the possibilities. Eric, the, um, we should make sure we get an appraiser that has the ability to do an inspection as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Kathy McKechnie being the, being the realtor has the, has the connections there. Um, you know, and if it, if it were just something that we were kind of doing on the fly, we would just see about having George Russell uh, go over there and kick the tires, so to speak. Um, but in, in, in terms of looking to move potentially towards a contract to purchase, um, you know, as, as we discussed, felt it was better to have somebody that like was bonded and, and did this as a practice where they could like draft a legal document that they would then warrant professionally that, um, you know, that this was their professional opinion. So, um, but yeah, wanting, we want to have both a value as well as a list of things where it's like stuff that needs to be fixed um, because there will be things. Do we know that there's ever been a phase one on that property? If Environmental. I said, do we know if there's ever been a phase one st environmental study to the property? Oh, I've never heard that term before. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably premature, but if we were to go forward, we would probably want that mm -hmm. because we would be, um, if there are, were to be environmental problems, we would be liable for any damage uh, without limitation to clean those up. And I'm not so it sounds like sounds like something we'll want to do. I'm not suggesting there would be, but it's just, you know, it's it's uh, probably um, a good idea. No, it's certainly a good idea. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Kathy, I see that you've joined us. Uh, do you have anything to add in, in terms of the discussion with the museum? Uh, no, Eric, I think you covered it very nicely. And I, I would definitely agree with John. Um, I know the history of the, it was originally built as a bank, so I don't know. Hopefully there's no environmental secrets down there, but it's a very good call on your part. Uh, perhaps even something the seller would be uh, I mean, you can negotiate. Would hope. Yeah. Sure, you can negotiate that, I think. Well, I'm sure you could. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. If, 
they're sitting on a property that nobody wants to buy anyway. And on top of that, that would add to their uh, yeah. the displeasure of the buyer. So yeah, good. Thanks for that suggestion, John. Yeah. No, um, put a cap on it. I, I would say that the, the conversation overall was um, a really positive one. Um, I would say that everybody, um, you know, coming to the meeting felt that, uh, came to an appreciation that we were all generally on the same page as far as where we'd like to be. Um, that the discussion was productive and that we left with a, um, a joint, uh, general plan as far as next steps. So um, on that note, um, oh, uh, more relevant to the foundation, I should highlight that one of the items that was discussed was that um, the potential need for a joint um, fundraising entity, one that would have joint representation from the museum and the library uh, that would work to coordinate um, as a 501c3 organization, the raising of money for this project. So that was something that was, was discussed. And I mentioned that because it, I think, will be relevant as we jump into our next side of the discussion, which I think will be an update on um, the discussion with the friends. So M Melissa or Kathy, um, I would turn things over to you as the folks along with Jillian who were there and uh, representing the library for that. I'm sorry, Eric, what did you? Update on the meeting with the friends. Okay. Melissa, go ahead. Do you have a question or a comment? Um, well, I'll give you a, a quick overview. Hear us out. They did not immediately. Hmm. Your audio is cutting out, Melissa. Are you able to hear me a little bit better now? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so what I just said was that um, the Executive Board of the Friends were gracious enough to hear us out without immediately shutting us down. They did have, <laughs> so that's promising. I turn left. <laughs> uh, they did have a couple of questions. Uh, as you know, we referenced the document that Janie and Kathy and Jillian worked on. Um, we each took turns presenting a portion of that document. It was really comprehensive, I think. Um, there was nothing incredibly alarming in it because it was very top line. Um, so they heard us out. They did have some questions for clarification and they will consider um, the, the opportunity. I think it's an opportunity. So I'm using the word opportunity. They are going to consider it. Um, I am unaware if we have yet received an official invitation to the next friends meeting where we would then, I think, present this to the larger group. And then I believe we would be excused and then there would be a vote or maybe the vote would be at the next meeting. I'm not sure, but- Excuse me, Melissa, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, to your question there, um, the agreement with Eileen and I is after this meeting, I will follow up with her and let her, let, she's, well, after whenever we discuss the talking points that they sent us, we will, res, I will respond to Eileen and set something up before the Friends April 23rd meeting. Okay, okay, yes. So all in all, there's going to be a part two. I mean, the conversation will continue, so that's a win. Yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I, I, I thought um, <laughs> they're worried about the small stuff and they're agreeing to the big stuff. I mean, right. which, you know, they're worried about losing their $20,000. Gee, that's, I mean, in terms of what we want to do, that's peanuts. Um, right. So, 
I'm not surprised. Um, but you know, the key is getting this into one organization. We can't go forward as two separate fundraising organizations for the same entity. Um, it just leads to all sorts of confusion and, and um, yeah. Um, so I was, I was very encouraged by their lack of perception of what's really going on, put it bluntly. Yes. Yeah. I do think there's, we've got to, there are some things that we're just not considering. I wish they could open up their heads and see what's going on inside there because I wasn't expecting there to be that, um, as much concern about the minutiae. I did think it was the larger scope that was gonna be concerning, but it's the opposite. So um, I will have to speak to that. We'll have to plan for that and um, address that. Um, Melissa, did you get the sense that this was um, new to them, this whole idea? Or do you think that they had an idea of what was um, coming you know what i didn't get a sense one way or the other quite frankly uh they were pretty i i don't know if jillian and kathy felt the same way but i felt like they were keeping their cards really close to their chest they were not extremely expressive um and the conversation was just pretty neutral there wasn't um there wasn't an acknowledgement at all about the idea or any sense of familiarity upon hearing it so I, I didn't, I don't get that impression. I did not come away with that impression. Jillian and Kathy, did you? I, no, I think we probably would have had more conversation. We didn't, I didn't necessarily feel there was much conversation at all in that meeting. Um, and we might have had more of a response if we had sent them the case statement in advance. So we kind of came at them with a lot of information. And that's the feeling that I, I walked away with is that they were kind of processing and absorbing. And then the, the document that we got from Eileen is really their response to that meeting. Right. And to be completely yeah, transparent. My, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kathy. No, I was just going to say that my impression is the same impression I have every time I've met with a small group from the Friends. They do not, they are very, uh, their face doesn't change. They don't ask a lot of questions. They listen. They're very polite. Um, and then the meeting's over. So there was, to me, it was no surprise that, that demeanor. Um, so yeah, I wasn't too surprised by that. And I have one other question too. Um, John, you um, are very good at putting, putting not too fine a point on saying, if we don't get this collaboration our group is pretty much dead in the water. Um, was that sentiment expressed at all to the friends? No. Okay. I think that the overall conversation that we had when making the case statement was that that was not the approach we wanted to take. Yeah, well, I mean, they- I would agree. I, would agree. I was just curious. Okay. They, just wanted to make sure. You've got to realize, I think, this is a very unsophisticated fundraising group. The friends you're talking yes. about. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. Very unsophisticated. So I yeah. think they, they probably implicitly realize that and there's they kind of get their defenses up. Um, that's part of it. But you know the, the fact that they were willing to acknowledge that a capital component could be part of the fundraising under one entity with one donor, I mean, with one donor base, which is way I read Eileen's comments, even though they feel that they still need to be in charge, you know, that's that, that can work out down the road. I, getting them to agree to one entity with one donor base, with the ability to raise capital funds beyond them, I don't want to say measly $20,000, but, you know, when you're looking at a project of over a million dollars, $20,000 is the drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's just, I think they're just very unsophisticated and that they get their, they get threatened as yeah. a result, you know, so. Yes. They, yes. the sense I took away was that uh, they are okay letting us use the spare bedroom 
in the house uh, as, as long as we follow the house rules and keep the volume down. <laughs> I'll play. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they're, they're, they're definitely protect, protective of, of what they are currently doing. Um, and, you know, are, are definitely, you know, first and foremost interested in, um, you know, protecting that. The, the, the one, you know, item of concern that I had in the, the notes that we got from Eileen is just that um, the, the issue of the control. Um, and that I think is something that we can work out. Um, I, I think it's a great good thing to have the, the friends um, involved enough to have participate in the decision making on things. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I, I do think that we want to be sure to set it up in, in, a, in a manner where we don't end up providing a veto um, on things either. That we, we want to con continue to allow the, the library to, you know, be able to identify and direct where the capital funds need to go. Well, I mean, I did it, maybe I read this wrong. I thought they were saying they still wanted control over the twenty thousand dollars, but not they didn't necessarily insist on control over the capital funds part of the fundraising. That would not be that would not be agreeable to give them control over everything like that. I, I agree with you, John. That's how I read it too. Okay, well, maybe I read it wrong, but yeah. re regardless. Um, you know, we just need to be sure that we spell that out um, yeah. as as one of the things in the details. So yeah. um, ultimately, it doesn't um, matter so much, you know, how we read it right now because we'll need to get the details out. The big thing, the takeaway, is that they're um, agreeable to operating as a single organization. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, I I don't have the paper in front of me, but I'm pretty sure what they wanted to do was set up an executive committee and non-employee library representatives would could serve on the executive committee or could serve on the, the committee that they designated. And then those people would be on the executive committee and have voting rights, but still probably the majority of their executive committee would be friends versus li library. Well, they, they specifically said that employees are not to be on that committee either, which I found concerning. Well, well what about actually, the friends? Sorry, Cassie. No, I was just going to say, I thought about that a lot, Jillian. And I think actually, if this is my interpretation to put it in front of all of you for what you think of it. I think they were, I think, okay, so Jillian's an employee of the library. If something is being voted on for the library, of course, Jillian is going to vote in favor of it. Therefore, it's a conflict of interest. I think that's where they're coming from. But I could be wrong, but that was my interpretation. So excluding employees of the library eliminates that conflict. Yeah, I assumed but it it's... was more relation to how they've done it in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm with Jillian uh, on this. Um... I, I get the, the logic as far as what they're saying, but it's an organization and it's gonna to continue to be an organization that has one purpose, which is sending money to the library. The, it's difficult to have a conflict when, when there's just one, <laughs> one pathway. It's, it's not like there's ever going to be a vote where it's gonna be, should we, should we send money to the library or to the park district? You know, it's difficult to have a conflict when there's never a choice. Well, I, I don't disagree, Eric. I'm just trying to share. I think their interpretation. And again, I would hope that this. I think you're. I think out. you're right. I just. Um. um I, mean, I think exactly yeah. that reasoning in a meeting with the friends might belie their concerns, but mm -hmm. somebody said in that little group said conflict of interest, and that's where they went with it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we will run into problems down the road if there isn't more staff involvement. Yeah, I wouldn't say staff, staff involvement I, requires membership on the committee as much as 
uh, you know, partnership with the representatives. I mean, I mean, it gets, it throws another layer in there, which is really unnecessary for a, a very small, even, even the combined organizations is still very small. So throwing another layer of, of, of in place. It doesn't also make sense because all for the, for as long as I can remember, Eric and Martha or Jillian or someone is always at the friends meeting discussing what is going to be used for the funds, but then the friends voted on it. Maybe that's the separation that they need for comfort level. And control. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, and this could reflect as as well the um an older reading of the the Illinois statutes. Uh, a lot of the friend organizations on the North Shore uh, popped up and became a lot stronger about 20, 25 years ago uh, because there was a push with uh, regulation in uh, the state of Illinois to firm up certain boundaries and the uh, reading of things was that you really needed to have that independent friends organization to comfortably fundraise uh, as a public library. Um, you know, the, the, the trends and the, um, you know, in, in terms of court rulings and in ter terms of new statutes in the last 20 years has shifted things the other direction, um, where it's now um, much more possible to com comfortably go out as a library and have an integrated, semi-integrated uh, foundation that is, works a lot more closely with the library. And that's the direction that a lot of libraries are going. Um, so part of it might just be um, you know, working with the, the foundational um, ideology for that group, uh, for the friends, and why they are there to do what they do. Um, but that's doesn't reflect the, the current um, understanding and thinking of, you know, how things can be set up and generally are anymore. Um, but anyways, all details that, that we'll need to, to work out I, I, I do think it's, it's worth uh, making the case and that we should, um, you know, investigate and look into. Uh, the, the library staff does do a lot uh, for the friends and, and always has. I, I, I think that some um, in, in involvement there uh, with the, um, on the staff side would be um, appropriate. To, to go along with representation from others uh, representing the library uh, side along with the friends. I, to, um, I don't need to belabor this point. I'm, I'm struggling to understand what, what they're trying to accomplish, not what they're trying to accomplish, but I'm trying to understand why they are suggesting that this group, this separate group is necessary. I understand that they're trying to keep it objective, all decision-making objective, but what, why? Is it a steering committee? Is it, um, is it meant to just be prudent? I, I don't understand it. It's overly complicated. And where does the foundation representation fit into it? Or yeah, doesn't my, it? Yeah, my understanding based on the, the notes was that there would be a committee within the friends that would be in charge of capital fundraising um, under one umbrella, okay? And, yeah. And that committee would be in charge of, essentially, if there were a campaign, a campaign for capital purposes. Okay. Um, so the, there's one organization, only, yes. one or, only one organization. Now, the right. details of, of how that would, the governance, issue of who's in charge of what and who reports to whom and all that stuff is in the details. I mean, they're, they're just trying to yeah, get their head around. I mean, my sense is they're just trying to get their head around. <laughs> what do we do with this foundation if we're going to work together and how do we, how do we retain control, you know, which is an issue. Um, so, okay. you know, I think at this point, there's, we probably have more questions than answers, but it seems yeah. to me that their willingness to consider one, one entity, which gives us one donor base, one, you know, one prospect pool, 
one, you know, one data collection um, is really the key issue. Because yes. otherwise, you know, like I say, we're, you know, we're, I'm not sure where we are, but that's, yeah. you know, and I heard, I mean, I read it that they're saying we could go with one organization. They're just not sure how it's all going to work out. And I get that because it would be a brand new thing for them. Right. But at the same time, they're saying we're only concerned about our $20,000 a year, you know? Yes. Which shows how, huh? which shows how unsophisticated they are. And maybe they realize yeah. that and they're kind of being protective of their own unsophistication, yeah. but I don't, you know, they want to keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. And that was the big takeaway that I, for, for me in, in reading it was that, you know, they're willing to share space provided that they can be involved in the decision-making um, to a high degree and that there is a wall that's there um, that what they currently do is kept separate and an independence so that they can continue to do that. Um, mm. But here's the thing, if they're not, if they're not gonna participate in raising capital funds, they don't get to control where the capital funds are spent. That, that's that's non-negotiable. And I'm not sure they're even thinking about that. I think they just wanna keep doing what they're doing, which is figuring out how to spend the $20,000 based on our recommendations, right. whether it's computers or, you know, a fireplace or whatever, you know, that's what they do. You know, I'm actually, I, I, I kind of go along with John's thinking. I'm not troubled by this response or the minutia and the detail that they put into it because that's just sort of the way they are. Um, I also, could, I could be totally wrong on this, but I think that the guarded response is in preparation to the response of the general meeting with the friends. Um, mm -hmm. Some of those ladies are far more uh, particular with details than this group that we met with. Um, so mm -hmm. it might be just laying a foundation that could be acceptable to the general population. Um, I think which, what what we've gotten is a, yeah, we could do this. And this is how we'd like to set it up. It's a preliminary document for our review, knowing that we'll meet again. So it's not like we have to sign on the dotted line and be live with it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, think if, I think if we make salient points, of course we will respect, I mean, it's, their $20,000 is the most important thing to them. They don't wanna have some kind of fund where they, you know, we give them 750 and we walk away with a pot. They want to have their money and their meetings and their little signing letter party and they want to do all that. Um, and they have people who want to donate to that. So mm -hmm. that's important. Um, we want to, you know, extend the opportunities and go from there. And so what we need to do is refine who, who the we are in that part of the group and um, how we will uh, affect control of the capital campaign. So those are two issues to their um, suggestions, but I don't think it's out of the realm of the possibility that we can sit down and work this out. Yeah. I agree. Um, no, I do think we need to Go on. No, I was just gonna say, we do need to, whether it's today or next week or whenever, we need to um, rebut some of their suggestions and present that to them um, as um, an introduction, introduction to the next meeting, the next meeting that we have before the 23rd of April. I'm interested right. in doing, to, I'd love to put together a, some thoughtful responses. I completely agree with John that they don't, they don't know what they don't know. There is a, a certain level that we're going to have to contend with and be respectful of because uh, it doesn't sound like they really want to change that. But what we are 
suggesting to them, regardless of whatever details we work out, is expanding their program. We are asking them to take on um, some, a little bit more. But at the same time, we also have to protect what they're currently doing and not alter that. It's very nuanced. As my reading of it makes me think that it's just, a, it's, it's a dance that we have to do with them and I'm not yep. sure what the rest is. Uh, I want to give it a thoughtful shot so that we can keep the conversation going I think it's going to be a process it's not going to be agreed I think it's going to be a process and um, that's that's what's concerning you know I, I, I want... think that they I think that a lot of what was in Eileen's document was maybe first reactions. Uh, and I think as they get time to think about this more, I mean, this is sort of like, this is a, a little bit like uh, jumping from an advisory board to a regulatory board almost or something. It's, 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 Another, it's another step up in the hierarchy of fundraising and they're very comfortable where they are and this was their reaction, their initial reaction. And I think that um, they need to be given time and a lot of reassurance from us that we don't wanna just come in and take over their organization lock, stock and barrel. Um, but I, I think what everybody else has said that it's, that it's very much a dance. Um, we need to make them feel comfortable with being able to continue to do what they've been doing at the same time asking them to do more. Yeah, and I think, I think, I think the, the approach identifying Jillian and Melissa as um, to me, to us, a great opportunity for that you guys to step in and take over the day to day. That may have just put them a little bit into the discomfort zone that mm -hmm. that yeah. some somebody else was going to be doing stuff. Um, so that that's something I don't I don't disagree with it, but it's something we have to reframe so that they're comfortable with it. Um, because obviously, there's no organization to to walk into every day anyway. So I don't know what. But they seem to, th I think, I think they thought that was a step too far, that we had already planned oh. who and what and where, um, which we had, but not to their, not in, in some, it, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a, an unfriendly takeover, I think, basically, and we don't want it to be that way. Mm -hmm. I, I just, to be perfectly honest with you all, I did get um, a text message from both Lindsay and Claire immediately following uh, the uh, they were very nice they said that was a great presentation thank you so much um it was really um helpful to hear your ideas this is not normally how these two ladies who are personal friends of mine communicate with me via text uh -huh. so i interesting it was a little uh, it was it was, it, it felt tight -lipped. And so um, I just said, I replied back to both of them. Thanks for the opportunity. I hope that you're willing to consider, I think a lot of potential. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to talk to the group again, or you guys can ask me individually, just please reach out. Claire then replied to that second text. I wanna let you know that since I've been on the friends board, it's been my understanding that Eileen in particular is very reticent to make change. And that it's was very it. what? And that reticent to make change. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, thank you. Reticent to make change. Well, she's definitely from the original group that I ever met there. So as is as is Eva. Ava. Um, yes. Yeah, I still don't think we're in a bad place. Um, no, nope. I, I don't I, either. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. But I actually am surprised by their response. It's more open than I would have expected. 
the limitations, I think, well, like point six and seven about the taxes and about targets, that's just misinformation. Eric handled that. So now we're down to five talking points, um, one of which says we want our $20,000. That's fine. So I, I still think that we can work this out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I do too. We just have to be careful about our responses and really, like I said, I wish we could crack their heads open. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, we can do maybe in like a year and a half we can get away with that but not right now we'll just keep working on it so, yeah so what is our next step well, it I sounds like you're gonna meet with eileen no i i, Sorry, I informed I, I i told eileen that i would follow up with her after this meeting okay it sounds okay. like melissa is going to draft a reply document okay and i but if that's possible, I'll start it immediately because I've got some, some ideas, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we all support um, our response. We're all thinking the same thing in terms of our responses. And I wonder if there is a appropriate time, if we're coming upon an appropriate time to really put the cards on the table a little bit more than we did in the initial introduction by saying, um as a foundation are really up against the wall and and we actually need you so we would be willing to work with you to define any terms that meet your level of comfort but we need you is it time for that or not so much personally i, I think it is I, I really do. Uh, I, I think that um, that that needs to be something that comes from us rather than from a third entity, that information. And I don't know what third entity that might be, but I, I just feel like it was appropriate not to say that at the initial meeting, but I think it's certainly appropriate to say it at the second meeting to let them know if nothing else, how serious we are about wanting this to work. Yeah. Well, I'm one the sincerity of it all. If their backs are up and there is some anxiety about control or what the future of the friends might be in this partnership, then I wonder if just um, stating our position sincerely might be an indication of, I don't know, I mean, vulnerability isn't the right word, but just being very honest that uh, we need them. And if we're all working for the same end, why wouldn't they help us? Why wouldn't they work with us? I absolutely feel that that's what we need to do. And it would help if they would get their heads around that the fundraising needs of the library go way beyond what they're doing right now. Yes. And if yes. we do it, if we do it together, we can accomplish that. If we don't, then we probably can't. And um, you know, if they're really truly friends of the library, they would want to, you would think, um, buy into the idea that we should raise as much as we can to support the needs of the library beyond what we're doing right now, what they're doing right now. Not that it's a however, yeah. I was just going to say, however, the, the question about Target really threw me because if the general pop, public thinks that we're, you know, flush with money from sales tax and everything else, no wonder they don't understand that we are in a critical situation. So perhaps um, a brief just overview, because and, and, Abel would get it, just a very brief overview of what our budget is, what our expenses are, how we do business. Um, and we don't have a whole lot of money coming in. I mean, the whole tax base thing, I respect people for not wanting to contribute for that reason. But the reality is there's nothing built into our budget that is giving us a lot of money to do anything else. And that's a huge misunderstanding. Um, and, and if, you, if you're going to raise major gifts, you're going to need to have that clearly spelled out for major gift. Um, sure, projects. sure. Yeah. They're going to want to know, yeah. you know, so. There's a communications piece to this that has to be, um, you know, fleshed out mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't so know how to break. If we, 
Go on. Sorry, sorry. No, go ahead, Melissa. That's the part that I um, have the most um, concern about is the communication component of it. Their initial response to a couple of sentences their year end about the foundation. How past that? Always in the back of my mind. Whatever compelled them to decline that suggestion is probably still there. It's probably still a part of things. And what is it? And what's the problem? And if we can't clarify that, if we can't at least get that acknowledgement that shows that we are both going in the same direction, I'm not articulating this well, but this is, this is to me the heart of what we may have stumbling blocks for them. I've been, That's what I've been thinking about it recently and I wonder if it's that they're worried that um, money would be taken away from that 20,000 if they separated the two line items. So meeting their base amount is the most important thing. And I think that they would feel like they were in competition with the campaign and what is more flashier and shinier, you know? Yeah. So that's, that was the takeaway that I had from it, that they just didn't want to have to compete with. And if there's just one fundraising line and then it gets divided after that 20,000, I feel like that's actually probably the easiest thing. It sounds like that's what they were doing. I mean, it's not, and they also objected to more, too many donor options, which I agree with. Um, uh, you either the friends traditional or campaign. And um, Melissa, I think you said that, you know, it's, it's typical to have like annual goals for the campaign. So that would be the spelled out. Um, but, you know, they want to get their 20, up front, which I respect that. If that's what all they want, that's absolutely fine with me. Because um, we know the friends can raise it now. So at least that much is going to come in. It's going to go to them. Um, but we have to design, you know, it's going to take a while to get to start getting that working and figured out and coming about. But to me, that's the heart of their response. They said, okay, to that. Um, so we have yeah, to build on that. Um, you know, there's, they didn't, they didn't even they didn't even flinch with that. They said, they said yes. And then they tried to come up with other criteria. So I think we should just be positive with their yes and build on it and chip away at, you know, hopefully we can point out, well, this might not, it, it would be helpful to us to have staff there. But I mean, they may see somehow, they may be threatened by identifying two people in two positions as taking over the day-to-day, -day. what does that mean? And they don't want that. And they don't want them voting in their little group. Um, so we just have to, you know, modify our approach and go, go about it diplomatically. I think I with still the friends, think, oh, go on, Kathy. No, no, in conclusion, I just, I think we got a yes, but I'm gonna go with the yes and work on the rest. Yeah. I think what the friend sees when they look at the foundation is they see an organization that's already more active than they are um, with regular committed staff time that's already outraising them. We are um, looking at the raw numbers over the existence time of the foundation. We are bringing in um, significantly more than the friends do um, per annum. We're not hitting our goals, but in, in terms of comparative side by side to the friends, um, you know, we are planning more events. We do have more um, activity that's going on. Um, you know, is, I, I, I do think from the friend's perspective that they, they look at the foundation and, and think, well, we could easily get subsumed in that and what they're working on. Um, Melissa, you were gonna jump in? I interrupted you, I'm sorry. I think that they want more. That's the impression that I get. So I do agree with Kathy. I'm just gonna take what I can see. I'm not gonna assume, mm -hmm. um, worry about things that haven't been articulated yet. I'd like to work off of that initial positive response and mm -hmm. find as we go along. Mm -hmm. um. I, I, I mean, in some ways we're making this up. 
as we go yeah. along. Right. 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 What you initially said, Melissa, I lost because you broke up. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on a second. Um, I don't know what, how much you heard, but my point is that I let go with the positive, with the positive response that they have and mm -hmm. just Absolutely. Address, Absolutely. address the concerns that they have right now. Um, and I hope that it will lead to a, another conversation and we will continue mm -hmm. to fine tune this as we go along. My concern is that in doing that, we're making things up as we go along. We're not necessarily following best practices or um, you know, established um, protocols of any kind, but we're really just um, addressing their needs and their concerns and their group pathology. And I wonder if we, if we set that precedent and we do this in the interest of just being able to get a hold of their database. I know that's a dirty word, but you know what I mean. And just to have the information that they have, I wonder, I wonder if, if we're going to accomplish our goal. But I'm not gonna, we're not going to worry about that yet. We're just going to start with getting it to the next level. I, I have a question for the group in general that's probably a bit the cart before the horse, but to the conversation we had at the beginning of this meeting in the museum um, and one fundraising entity, they, they are very good at raising money. So working with the museum, I just wonder how that factors into this conversation with the friends. I know that it's like a little too early. It's just that like, I, I kind of want to- a really good question. I, it is. I don't want to warn them, but I also kind of want to warn them and be like that this is an evolving door and it's it's kind of growing and it's moving quickly and yep. you know I don't want to scare them off, but like yeah. But by them are you referring to the friends or the, the friends? Museum? Yeah, the friends yep. because yeah. I could see them being really concerned about another organization coming in and and having a being a part of that conversation. But I could see this going really well with the museum. When you say they're really good at raising money, they send out a year-end mailing. Thank you. Exactly. No, I'm talking about the museum. The oh, museum yeah. is yeah. very good oh. at raising money. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Very I would, good. I would make the case that the friends overall are really not uh, that great at raising money. In fact. <laughs> no. Um, no. Oh, right. <laughs> no, no, the museum. So I'm just like, yeah. if all three the foundation, the friends and the museum were all working together on the capital campaign. Mm -hmm. Like I could see that going very well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's why I'm just wondering. Yeah. You got to make it in the so, best interest though, other than yeah. what you've yeah. got right now. So here is, here's a, something that I think we have to consider as being on the, the table is we do have two threads that are in play now. Um, we have the discussion with the museum as well as the discussion with the friends. And in the discussion with the, with the museum, we've discussed that there would be a uh, potential um, big benefit to having a uh, neutral 501c3 with representation um, from the museum and library. The foundation could be as an already existing 501c3 um, created um, a, as that entity. Uh, we would need to update our, our bylaws and, and purposes with, with the state, but that could be done and um, faster than creating an entirely new 501c3 that has, um, that is tax exempt. I thought the friends were so, a 501c3. No, I'm talking about working with the museum. Yeah. Oh, okay. The museum, the museum is also a 501c3. They are, yeah. but if we were to create a um, a separate 501c3 that was the fundraising organization for that project yes. with representation from the, the library and museum, which is what the, we did, what the museum specifically raised as something that they uh, felt had worked well, um, and it did um, 20 years ago. Honestly, I, um, I think the only mistake there was disbanding that committee. Um, I, I think sans that joint fundraising committee that um, a lot of the 
joint things just turned into um, arguments and that they would have been better kept joint. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, so we, we, we have that desire from the museum saying like, let's us and the library have this joint committee again. Um, and the foundation could be turned into that committee. Then we also have the opportunity with the friends who are saying, you know, let's, let's look at this, let's get into this. And they've, um, regardless of how we kick around the, the, the different points, they've definitely said yes, that um, they will consider um, and are open to a joint um, project of some type where those organizations merge. So um, the, the gist of that then is that for the foundation, we have um, two possibilities here. As, as far as where the foundation as an organization could go. The merger with the friends versus the, um, you know, the 501c3 with the uh, working with the museum. Ultimately, I, I think best case for, for us, for the library, is um, doing both. And it just becomes a question of how you do that and where the current resources of the foundation go. Um, that um, do we want to get an active annual campaign uh, committee going within the uh, friends? Yes, absolutely. I think we want to do that regardless. I think regardless, we also want to have a partnership going with the museum, um, specifically aimed at pushing forward the um, project aimed at the um, acquiring that PNC building, funding the library development where the museum is, funding the museum getting into that space. I think we wanna do both of those. And I think the question really becomes, um, you know, looking at what the resources that the uh, foundation has, um, you know, what do we do with that 501c3 um, that are currently exists? And what do we do with the um, funding as well as the responsibilities that currently sit with the foundation? So, to, in, in my mind, um, that's kind of, I think, a big question that we're coming up on. Um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm planning to dig into more when I'm not actually technically speaking on vacation as I am today, uh, the, the details as far as how difficult it will be repurposing a 501c3 for a, um, an expanded, and really that's what it would be from the perspective of the the, organ the state who we'd be filing with that we would be saying like, well, now we're raising funds for two organizations instead of just one. Um, so it would be an expanded purpose from the state's perspective rather than a straight up change. Um, how easy would that be? I'm gonna work on finding that out. Um, but if it's truly easier, which is what it looks like now, then um, you know, maybe we repurpose and then we just think about where the currently raised funds would go because the, the funds that we've raised were raised principally for, you know, the, the library rather than a joint initiative. So plus then we get into the agreements that have been made and uh, the foundation support, um, you know, for the development coordinator, which we absolutely need to be sure that we keep going. Um, yeah, about, Eric, if I could jump in, details. please. Um, yeah, now you stated yes. all that very well because Steve Krauss yesterday brought up this, um, well, first of all, I can't tell you how we talk about a meeting going well. Yesterday's meeting with the museum went well. Um, by, you know, we had five people totally in agreement with this is something that would be very good, a win win across the board, and let's see what we can do. So, from that point of view, it was positive, but it would be a long haul uh, success if it works. Um, and I couldn't help, Steve Kals brought up the fact that there had been a separate 501c3 established by the museum and um, library and perhaps village as well, I don't know, uh, for, this, for the goal of raising money for the library as we now know it. Um, and that's when we, Eric and I got into this discussion about the foundation. In the back of my head, all I kept thinking is, whoa, there's an awful lot of 501c3s floating around here. Um, thinking about what we could be doing with the friends who are already a 501c3. And how do we tell the friends six months from now, we don't need you anymore. I mean, it, it, it gets a little convoluted. Um, and 
in keeping it simple for now, if we, I satisfy myself by thinking, well, the relationship with the friends is to build an annual fund, which would outlive any project to move everybody around and get the museum settled and so forth. So that's, there's a rationale to this annual fund being in, creating it, partnering with the friends in terms of their fundraising, their base and so forth and going with it. Um, and then allowing for a relationship with the museum, either structured through the foundation, but if that gets too muddy, we'd probably have to do something separate. I will tell you, um, in terms of working with the friends or working with the museum, the museum folks are, it's night and day in terms of forceful personalities, um, very territorial about what they want and that's the way it's gonna be. So um, I, right now we seem to have agreement that there's a pro, an opportunity for the two, for the library and the museum to take off together and do something great, which would be fabulous. Um, but if we tried in any way to blend the friends and everything else into it, all of that makes sense. I cannot imagine these three parties in one room surviving the full frontal attack of the museum. Um, so there's going to have to be some graceful ironing out someday if this thing with the friends does work out. Um, I wouldn't let that deter us because there's too much unknown. But no question, a little bit ahead to Jillian's original point, this is going to get a little confusing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, one step at a time. <laughs> right, right. Um, it definitely helps redefine, though, what we're looking for with the friends. You know, yeah. if like, you know, if it's a, a bit more simplified version versus a merger, I think that that might set us up for more possibilities down the road with. Yeah, museum. if it's a. If it's an a pro, a pro in terms of one solicitation, one organization looking for funds for a capital campaign or for the traditional friends, one mailing, one database to develop, um, funds come into one port or the other port and we go from there. That just isn't very complicated. Um, and the simpler we keep it, I mean, the, the foundation could go ahead and have events and this and that and everything else. I don't think we have to sit down with the friends every time we do it and the funds are going to collect, but it's just, I mean, we got to think of the general public, which in Lake Bluff is pretty darn small. They're going to go crazy if they see four or five uh, organizations that are benefiting the library. They're going to throw up their hands and go to Lake Forest. It's not going to work. Yeah. So. So, that, so there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, I guess it's, let's, let's be positive. It's a good problem to have. We have yeah. multiple opportunities. We have to develop them and time will tell what's the best for the library and we'll pursue them accordingly. Let's just be positive. Yep. I, yeah. I'm looking forward to this a lot more, <laughs> actually. We have a lot of opportunities on the table. Yeah. yeah. Well, Melissa, we can't down. hear you. Melissa, you're saying things we can't hear. Oh, me? Again. Melissa. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Out. Now we can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm so pleased that these conversations are even happening. I didn't think that the bank was ever going to be on the table. And the fact that you just had a very positive meeting is so exciting and encouraging as far as I'm concerned. And the potential is thrilling, I think. It would be wonderful for our community and all the reasons we've discussed. With the friends, I still feel like it's a question of common sense. I really do. And so we're gonna have to figure out a way to break through that unsophistication um, respectfully and gently, and I, I guess on their time frame, but um, it might be a marathon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I think the marathon is right. I think where they're at right now, you know, and again, it's going to be a conversation and we'll find out more and we'll, you know, d discuss and work together. But, um, you know, Melissa, you said that you right now it's, relay it's sharing. Go on. Sorry. 
I was just say, Melissa earlier said, do we just lay out the cards and say, look, we really, really need you. I don't like the idea of going in there desperate, but oh. praising it that we really need a decision. We're really excited about meeting with you, blah, blah, blah. We need a decision. To me, the most critical part of this is that letter that they start talking about in July. And then they write it and then they send it. And once they send it, they are sealed for a year. Yeah. And if they don't put us in that letter this year, we're talking about a, you know, 15 months from now that we're still trying right. to do the same thing. We, that, to me, that's the point that we need to make. Um, this is better this, for the library like, across the board. Yes, exactly. I couldn't agree with you more. And that was the point I was trying to make with that initial uh, with my concern about communication. If we can't okay. get breakthrough on that level, I don't know uh, how far we'll be able to take this. Yeah. Uh, so I, let, me, let me give it a shot I, and I'll ask for your input and any edits or suggestions you have. I don't wanna seem like uh, we're desperate or down and out because that, as Eric said, we're inconceivably pulling in more than they are but I do want um I do feel like there's some merit in the sincerity of communicating a little bit of vulnerability allowing them the opportunity to kind of be I don't know um the alpha dog and yeah. and offer the help and the maybe they're the strong suggesting to them that they're the stronger entity and that what they could do would be so great and huge for the library in, in offering this chance to collaborate serves the greater good. There you go. I think, I think we might have a better chance this time around because they'll be up. a little, <laughs> they'll be yeah. more invested. Yeah. 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 And I'm, you know, the other thing is don't be surprised if when, when you do meet with them again, that they've had more time to think about it and maybe expand their thought bubble a bit yeah, to yeah. include. Mm -hmm. Try and get them excited about the possibilities. Goals. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. Um, you know, I do think we should be careful on, on leaning. I, I agree that that we want to, you know, be real with them as, as far as the positive contribution that they can make and that we, you know, really need them to be on, on board and with us and working together as one. Um, I don't know that they, that they're ready to be an alpha though. Um, that, yeah, that yeah, might be, right, right. that might be scary. That might be scary. I will not, yeah, I won't phrase it like that. You're right. I agree. I don't think that they want that. I don't get, I'm not getting that impression. Yeah. I got to find, I, we just have to they find They want to be a useful beta. <laughs> okay. That's right. <laughs> they do. I think you're right. And you were saying stuff before that and I didn't hear any of it. You kept breaking up on me. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's my fault. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm not in my, my usual post, but um, I guess what I'm saying is, is it time to be emotionally manipulative? Sure. Please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That'll, laughs> when in doubt, yes. <laughs> okay. But I'll give it a crack. So, okay. that's, so I'm... I, I'm going to have to cut away, group. Um, I'm going to respond to Eileen that we met this week um, and that we're, um, I'll tell her we were all distant ports. And so we're doing our best to get our thoughts together. And um, will we be meeting next Wednesday, usually? Can we please? I, I love a yes. deadline. I love a deadline. And I'd love to be able to share with you the responses before the meeting so that we can discuss them in the meeting. Great, great. So next, next Wednesday at one o'clock, is, which is our usual time, um, I can be in the library or I can be on Zoom, whatever you guys want to set up. Um, Likewise. So I'll let Eileen know that we'll be uh, putting our thoughts together. We'll be meeting on whatever that date is, around the 5th or 6th of April. Um, and I will follow up with her at that point. 
Two o'clock was our original meeting time because Eric and I have a check-in meeting at one on Wednesdays with the other staff. Is oh, that okay. possible okay. to do two o'clock? Sure. That's why I was screwed mm -hmm. up today because I thought it was two at one time. So sorry. Don, um, Janie, yeah. um, yeah. what's your... I, yeah. I will be available? traveling that day. So one or two o'clock, I, I will be totally unavailable. Could you do noon? I can do earlier. Uh, well, let's see. Or 11. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, my flight leaves at 10 to Philly. Oh. oh. Uh. So, um, so I'll, you know, I'll be at airport in plane at yeah. airport yeah. in yeah in Uber. <laughs> well, yeah. why why don't we meet and we'll get notes right off to Janie. Okay. And and then Janie, you can respond at your convenience. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. So, okay. Uh, we'll meet again next. Uh, Next Wednesday, did we settle on two o'clock as the time? That's fine with me. Yeah, two o'clock it is. And so we'll we'll do that. Um, before then, Melissa will draft and send out um, her her notes as far as a follow up to the uh, to the friends. And and I will uh, email yep. Eileen today yes. that we have had a long distance discussion mm -hmm. that we'll follow up with. Uh, you know, some plans next Wednesday, and then I'll get back to her at that time. Do we want to um, let them know that we would really like to meet with the friends when they gather in April? She knows that. I mean, I've stated that several okay. times. And I've stated that we would actually like to meet with her executive group before April to the April 23rd okay. meeting. Okay. And, I, and I'll, I'll restate that. Good. Um, but that 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 she's known. I think that something in her response affirmed that as well. So yeah, we'll keep that going. Excellent. So uh, in terms of the museum, I think that at this point is mostly a keep everybody informed. And then in yeah. terms of the fate of the foundation, uh, I, I think the, the note there is, is well made that uh, we have multiple opportunities going and we'll see how those develop. Yes. All right, anything else that we need to hash out or decide? Uh, Jillian, anything that needs a decision as far as the uh, grand celebration that you're working on for the summer? Uh, not at this moment. Melissa and Eliza and I are actually meeting tomorrow. I keep thinking today is Thursday. We're meeting tomorrow uh, to dis discuss sponsorship options for right. um, Exciting. Prize prizes and covering band costs and stuff like that. So. Just need somebody to give us a car. <laughs> well, Canals. Call William Madden at Canals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger okay. things have happened. <laughs> right. Okay. I'd be really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I think we've covered all the territory then that we had. Uh, been looking to cover today. Plus, we're coming up on the uh, hour and a half that I consider to be usually as long as you want to take any yeah. meeting. Yeah. Uh, so, so move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Yeah. Okay, I John. second. Kathy. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Right. Good meeting. These are very Thanks. exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Bye.